Eddie Smith from Country Road Entertainment. He's behind the scenes today. What's up, Eddie? How you doing, Bubba? I'm super fantastic. Thank you for allowing me to come into your beautiful home here. Yeah, I felt like it was time to get you out of hiding. I know. Well, yeah. you know, it's been tough. Well, well we got you. We're going to get you all broadcasted out to the world. Yeah, it's been so, you know, me, myself, and, and two other my band members, we're all part of the essential workforce, so we've been working, and, uh, and my craft has been super busy. I've been putting in 70, 80 hours a week trying to uh, keep America running. Uh, I'd like to send a shout-out to all of my uh, Teamster brother and sisters and uh, that are working, delivering all the goods, and uh, also all the uh, police officers and firefighters and all the medical staff that are just... Uh, it's amazing what they're doing to try to keep this nation running in the world. So uh, this pandemic's been horrible for everybody. And uh, my heart goes out to all the local musicians, too, here in Arizona. Um, you know, I don't do this full time. Uh, in our band, Highway 260, the only the only musician we have that's a full-time musician is Rich uh, Hinshaw, and he's our drummer. And uh, I know that he's doing well. Um, he does drum lessons via, uh, you know, uh, via Facebook and whatnot. Um, but he's, he's keeping his head above water. We've been practicing a little bit. Um, but you know, I look at musicians like Josh Roy, uh, Mogion, uh, Southbound, Western Fusion, who else? Arizona Blacktop, Clint Williams with, uh, Marble Heart. Right, right. Uh, I know you did keeps cutting out. I know you did a uh, interview with JD Edwards um, mm -hmm. with his band. You know, we haven't been doing a lot of Facebook live stuff, just acoustical stuff, because like I said, this isn't our full time jobs. Um, you know, we don't want to take money away from, you know, I mean, I know this is your full time job here with country Road entertainment, yep. you know, you've been doing a lot of interviews and, and uh, you know, I want to give a shout out to all the uh, local venues too, you know, Good time, Charlie's, and uh, a lot of the restaurants, the Hitch and Post, Mo and Tina over at the Hitch and Post. You know, they're doing curbside and they're doing you know live feeds. Um, I'm excited to announce that next Saturday, the 25th, I think it's the 25th, we are doing a live feed from Roosters from three to five. Uh, Cherie and Steve were kind enough, kind enough to let us. Every time you move your mouse, maybe not. No, it's weird. <laughs> it's never happened to me before. It's because there's a ghost in the house. Right, Carly? Um, but uh, we're doing a live feed with the full band at Roosters next Saturday from 3 to 5 on Facebook Live. And I know, Eddie, you're going to be there doing some filming. And uh, it yep. should be a pretty cool pretty cool deal. Um, you know, back to the, all the, the local musicians. I know uh, Rob West is in there, too. And... Uh, you know, a lot of them are going, doing Facebook Live and, and going through Venmo and PayPal, you know, for, for tips. And I just want to give a shout out to all the, the fans that are out there supporting all these you know, musicians who aren't working. Um, you know, hopefully we get through this pandemic soon and, uh, you know, get back rolling. So it's, uh, it's been a test. And I really hope that we learn not only as a nation, but as a, a world that, you know, I mean, we can only control so much. And, Amen. you know the way that the pace that, that this nation is going, I mean, we're going to drive ourselves out of, out of life. I mean, everything is so fast paced and, you know, we work in the delivery world, you know, with, with the UPSers and, and, uh, you know, I worked for UPS for 23 years before I moved over to the, to the union full time. And, you know, everyone wants their package now, you know, you look at Amazon and, and, and it's just driving, this nation into, I don't know. I really hope that it slows us down and, and we fall back on what we realize what's most important. It's our family. You know, I'm a, I'm a brand new dad. I have a 10 month old son. And, uh, for me, it's been nice to be able to not play as much because I've been able to spend a lot more time with my son. Um, and my wife, you know, it's, uh, it's been pretty amazing. And I think that, uh, this will really open a lot of people's eyes and, uh, hopefully bring back fam put, but families back in families, you know, what do you think, Eddie? No, I agree. I agree. Well, I think, I mean, you know, everyone has gotten, um, 
just like you said, I mean, everyone's been stuck together for so long. I think I'm, I would hope that it's kind of brought that bond back. And and I kind of like with everybody, not to get into the religious aspect, but with all the virtual church stuff going on and everything, um, you know, I noticed for a change, my family sitting down and actually watching that together, generally because of the way it's set up with, you know, at our um, church, they do like date night on Saturday night. And that's when we go with them. My daughter is over you know, babysitting with the little kids and the babies. And then my son wants to go there and play with the other kids his age. So we actually never really sit together at service. Right. So it's like, we're spending so much more time together. And I think it's, you know, I think it's kind of strengthens that bond with the family. And I hope when we come out of this, we're actually still being kind to each other. Absolutely. And I mean, for a while there, um, a lot of people were commenting on it, how, um, people were just getting mean and the next thing you know we go into a pandemic and people are actually being decent to one another and i think that's great right you know for sure right i think to, to add to your point I, I think one of the issues is like people are uh, you if you want to call it cabin fever but they're going stir crazy too like they're stuck in their homes and it's like you know i i really hope that we don't make the wrong decision that we have enough data to back up you know when they're gonna i guess open up everything again you know and uh I just hope we make the right decision as a nation that uh, we don't rush into this too fast. I mean, I know that the economy needs to get going again, but um, you know, we really need to put you know lives before before any of that. Um, you know, a good buddy of mine, Donnie Grubb, who you've talked to, you, him and Kit, you know, Donnie oh, Grubb, yeah. man, and uh, him and I talk about issues like this, and you know, he's a he's a very religious man, and, and uh, I just I just hope we learn from this. Is my main is my main thing. I'd really like to see. Um, I just really like to see society slow down and, uh, I don't know. 100% agree. Right. You know, well, um, slow down, you know, but like, in just like you're talking about it in terms of reopening the country and it's like, let's do it right. Right. Let's not put any more lives in danger. Um, and as we do it, let's just kind of gradually open that barn door and see where it takes us. Um, I, I don't think we should rush anything. And, and the thing is too, is for, or anybody out there that hasn't, you know, um, who has mixed feelings on this and, you know, the other things going around like the flu and whatnot. The the point is here, folks, is, yeah, this one got a little ahead of them. But um, if we learn from this going forward, um, then we don't have to worry about it necessarily happening again because we're going to be taking the right precautions. Uh, and I hate to say it, just working in the music industry as long as I've had, and I've been in and out of the scene since 1996. You're old. I know. <sighs> going to be 41 soon. Oh, my God. I know. I, I remember when I had my first <laughs> beer. Right. <laughs> don't worry, buddy. I got you beat. But my point is, though, is people don't wash their hands. <laughs> right. I know. Yeah. I know. It's crazy. It's so, crazy. Um, yeah. I know. You know, I want to, I got to tell you too. So like I said, we're not full-time musicians and, and out of respect for the guys that are full-time musicians. Right. And it's really cool. Cause like you'll watch, you know, Brian Childress from, from Western fusion, he'll go and say, Hey guys, so we're going to do Facebook live from two to three. And then following up after us is going to be, uh, I can't remember who followed up. Was it, it wasn't Marvel hard. It was, uh, no, Nathan Dean, mm -hmm. I think. You know, Nathan Dean's another guy too that's full time musician. You know, I know right. him and Mandy are doing, you know, the the duos and whatnot. But um Yes sir. You know, it's really cool to watch and these. Shout music. out to Mandy, actually, not to interrupt. She's been uh, not feeling too good and she sounded great last night. So Mandy, oh, yeah. if you're out there, you see this, glad to see you're uh doing okay right now. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, nothing but prayers and love for y'all. Right. But what's really cool is, you know, I think like I, I, I look at musicians like myself that aren't full time. And, you know, like a David Voss, um, I'm trying to think of some of the guys, buddy Martell, like we've kind of held back and, and, and not really, I guess want to say still the, out of the cookie jar, at least in my opinion. Right. Um, I mean, these guys have been doing it for years. I've only been doing this for two years. I mean, this is still just a hobby for me, you know, and when I make a paycheck, it's, mm -hmm. it's like a bonus. Um, but it, I got to tell you being in this, in the, in the music industry for, for uh, two and a half years, like I've had like uh, Drew Cooper, who has been a huge influence in my life. And, and same with Donnie Grubb. I mean, these guys are, are stewards of the musicians. You know, they, they, Absolutely. Lend a, they lend a, you know, Drew's helped me out. And Donnie is one of the guys that, that made me really want to start a band. Um, 
you know, these guys are, like I said, they're full-time musicians and they're trying to support their families on it. And, uh, they're doing great. You know, Drew does live shows. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That guy's a, I mean, that guy, <laughs> that guy plays every day. Yeah. 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 He's a, you know, and it's funny because we were, um, when I was on with uh, J.D. Edward, um, Edwards the other day with him and the Black Stallions, I was actually talking about like, you know, so like, for example, he's been around for like, I think four years at least here. And you've been around for a couple of years. And then you guys, we have, you know, people like Drew Cooper. We have people like Donnie Grubb. We have people like Clint Williams and even Josh Roy. And all these guys are like, now, like you said, they're stewards. And they're, they just like when the new get kids on the block come in, they are there with open arms going, Hey, how can I help? You know, yeah, super, super good guys, super professional, right. you know, um, just outstanding, like, you know, good character guys, you right. know what I mean? So, uh, I think, I think we're blessed in that here in Arizona to have that kind of camaraderie, you know, I, I gotta sure. tell you. So not that I'm in the Nashville, Nashville scene at all, but I've right. been to Nashville <laughs> a few times as a tourist and, and on business, but, um, you know, I love the, the Nashville scene, but I've, right. I've actually, uh, you know, been lucky to meet some of these musicians, like a, a guy by the name of Jamie Michael. He's a the lead guitar player for Shenandoah, and he, you know, he works the, you know, Whiskey Row down there, or right. uh, you know, Broadway and all that. And uh, he shared some stories with me that, like, <laughs> it's kind of cutthroat in Nashville. Yeah, that's what I've heard, like it's... behind the scenes, like guys getting instruments stolen and. Oh, sure. You know, I mean, I, well, know. that's what well, you've heard me call over for as much as I love Nashville and I love Tennessee and right. I love what it's done. Um, I have referred to it. I know you've heard me say it and you wonder why. So I call it the Nashville machine and I know I'm not the only person that used that terminology. Right. You know? Right. But, um, I don't know. I've just been, I've been, I've been pleasantly surprised at the, the, the high level of respect that all the Arizona musicians have for each other, um, reaching out, you know, my whole dream kind of started about four years ago with Brent Rasmussen and Kelly Rasmussen up in Heber. You know, we got a place up there. My dad and I do the ranch dream of dream ranch. You've, you and Carly been to several times. Yes. And, uh, you know, Brent and Kelly are part mm -hmm. of, uh, they started Heber Ridge band and, uh, we would sit out in the, in the uh, garage and, you know, play. And, uh, we kind of started our career together there and, you know, Brent's brother is uh, part of uh, Young Country, who's been around for years. Um, so it's just, a, it's a really cool community, and I'm just, I'm really blessed to be in it. You know, I got, it's funny because you don't, it's such a, what I've learned as a band member, I don't want to call myself the lead of the band, but, you know, I did start it. And uh, Larry Brosson uh, and I started this band, you know, two and a half years ago. It was just going to be kind of a garage band. Hey, you know, let's just dink around. And then we found uh, uh, Bria. She was our bass player. And then we started off with a drummer by the name of uh, Don. And that lasted about two months. And then, uh, you know, Don had some some issues he had to deal with. So we found another drummer. And, uh, you know, then we started playing a few gigs here and there. And I'm like, wow, this is really happening fast. And then, uh, lo and behold, I set Bria up with one of my buddies and they moved to Iowa. So now I lost a bass player. <laughs> Thanks, Tommy. But, um, you know, we had, uh, Jack Gill play with us for, for a while. And, and I learned so much from Jack and we had, you know, Ryan Bacalar for a drummer. And now we have, uh, Ryan Rugolo playing for playing bass with us and Rich Henshaw. Um, and I think I really, we've only played one gig together, um, before, the COVID-19 pandemic hit and um, it was just a two hour little barbecue deal. Uh, that was our actually first gig ever, Dr. Crockett. And, you know, we stay true to him because that yeah, was our first gig ever. Um, but man, I'm telling you, I'm excited about Rich and Paul being part of uh, Highway 260. We also have George Gonzalez from uh, Zepopotamus that sits in with us from time to time on lead. And uh, like, it's funny to watch Larry, intermingle with george i don't know what you call it they like they get this vibe going on because you know larry's our lead guitar player and, and george steps in and plays lead and like it's like larry's that kid in the candy jar watching george play it's pretty earning in a candy store because he's just like a maze or like a christmas you know i mean george is uh an amazing guitar player and uh i've had i've got to sit in with some really great musicians i've sat in with donnie grubb um jesse marks from uh <clears throat> 
from his old band, you know, he came and played guitar with us up at Harold's one time. And, uh, like I said, it's just, it's been, you know, we got Todd Leckman that sits in with us on drums. Um, uh, another drummer we used was Craig Hurt, who's in a rock and roll band. He sat in with us and I learned a lot from that guy too. So it's just, it's been a really cool, cool ride. I mean, uh, if you'd have told me I would have started a band at the age of 45, 44, and three years later playing over 80 gigs a year yeah, <laughs> and have a, and have a cool, cool manager like Eddie Smith. <laughs> when I'm not losing my stuff. <laughs> By the way, I want to um, do a quick shout out the uh, to our patron sponsors today um, for uh, and thanking for um, them specifically for helping us continue to do this. We want to say uh, thanks to Tom Ryan Saloon and uh, Charlie Hopewell from Good Time Charlie's. Uh, we love you guys. Without without our patrons, we wouldn't be here today. And if you'd like to uh, support us, you can uh, have a look at it. Um, we are in www.patreon.com forward slash country road entertainment. That's what keeps us going. Just like Dustin said, I am full time and, uh, you know, show us love, some love and support if you can. We appreciate it. Um, also I wanted to, uh, um, um, let, uh, Dustin, well, I lost my train. Of thought. Dustin, we have some chatters in the chat room. Oh, what do we got? Well, we got Josh Roy. Oh no, my yes. romance. Yeah, Josh. Now he's he's. Um, I can't bring all of them on the screen today, but he just wanted to mention that you are a sexy beast, and he loves me too. Oh, and thanks, I quote, Josh, sexy beast, love you too, Eddie. So <laughs> you know, let me let me touch on that real quick. So Josh Roy, I'm gonna tell you how I met Josh Roy. So Josh Roy put a post up on Facebook that he needed a gig covered and I never met him. Right. I said, Hey man, you know, we'll take it and totally help me out. And I got to tell you just from that one click of the button, it's been hashtag bromance since then. <laughs> oh Mike, <laughs> you know, Dude, I, I got to tell you, Josh Roy is like, he's a bomb. Well, yeah. he's uh, awesome. I love that guy. You know, we're fans of music, right? Like, like Garth, like a Garth Brooks yeah. or, or, you know, I mean, I am a huge fan of Josh Roy. This kid, and I can call him a kid because he's what thirty one. Um, is Josh thirty one? I think he is. Josh, are you really thirty one? I think he is. Wow. But I've okay. got to do. You know, Josh and I have done a couple duos together, and oh my gosh, we had so much fun. And now we're bringing in my buddy who was supposed to be here today but couldn't, Russell Megovich, who's an up and coming artist that. Uh, if y'all like a Jamie Johnson, Cody Jinx kind of guy, Russell's your dude. But like That's we right. do, we do the trios with Josh, myself, and Russell, and uh, when Larry too, we do kind of a, a what do they call that? A quartet? Is that four? Or is that eight? Quartet? I, I, have no I think idea. that's a foursome. Now you sound dirty. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag bromance. Josh wrote, Josh said, yeah, he's 32, man. I had no 32. idea. 32. Oh my 32 God. He's an old man. Good Look Lord. Out. Look out. Does he even have to shave yet? Whoa. I don't know. We no, could man. always, we could always bring Josh in on this and ask we him. We should. Yeah, hold on. And actually I'm going to mention to uh, be sure to watch uh, Friday at five o'clock um, Pacific standard, eight o'clock Eastern standard for all of those of you on the East coast. And for our fans in Australia, I don't know what time it is there, but thanks for watching when you do. Good night, mate. Throw another shrimp on the bobby. Don't do that. <laughs> but uh, Josh Roy will be on for this coming Friday at 5 p.m. Ooh, I'm going to come crash it. Yeah. Oh, uh, well, it's going to be virtual, but you're welcome to crash. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Then I'm going to hack uh, it. You're going to hack it? Well, I will, if, if you want, I will send an invite and we can bring him in onto the broadcast with us and um see what he says but i'm gonna private message him that because that would be dangerous for this link to become public good lord can you imagine that like all of a sudden we have like 50 people trying to get into the the lobby over here no i know you know then the rumors float that you know josh and i have a relationship outside of marriage hey all i'm gonna say you guys do what you want to do but just remember in the end bubba i'm big spoon all right <laughs> I earned that right with this beer belly sitting here in quarantine. You know what they say, yeah. Eddie? Yeah. Men build their shacks over their best prized possession. That's right. Yeah. Shout out to Joe Lee Joe Lee's place. She just recently had her anniversary. Oh, congratulations. Yeah. Four, was it four years? No, I think it's like eight years now, bro. Nice. I, I, I have to double check. I forgot, but I was like, oh my God, has it been that long already? Right. So, Hey, let's, uh, let's get you to play a little music here and then we'll come back and, um, chat with the folks again uh, i want you uh 
Mm. I'm going to play a little Pearl Snap. Oh, how'd you know? Yeah, because I know you that well. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I can do a little Jason Bolin. I'm going to send this out to uh, Sheree over at Rooster. She's a big Jason Bolin fan. and uh, hey, hey. I know also uh, Drew, uh, I think Drew Cooper got to play open up for him and uh, Donnie Grubb got to play for him and I'm just so jealous. But so we're doing a little Jason Bolin for you. After I turn my guitar on. Yeah, that'd be a good thing. Ah, there we go. All right. All right, a little Jason Bolin. All right, and guess who we have in the lobby? Jason Bolin. No. <laughs> Honey Grub. Josh Roy. Oh, I don't know what the lobby means. He's in the waiting room, and he's on the air with us right now. Hey. What's up, man? Hey, Josh, I can actually hear you. <laughs> yeah, well, if you can't see me, uh, yeah, I do actually shave, um, but not this time. Got a little bit, little bit growing in there. He's not 32. He looks like he's 22. I, 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 <laughs> you should be. Oh, I'll, be I'll be 33 in May. May what? May 28th. May 28th. So what are you going to yeah. do for your birthday? Uh, probably camp. I don't know. Oh, nice. So what, what really sucks is that, so, uh, so Megan um, ended up trying to surprise me. So she bought tickets to go see um, Rodney Carrington. Or not. Uh, yeah. Yeah. No, Jeff Dunham. I'm sorry, Jeff Dunham. Um, out in Vegas, so she bought those tickets, but then that show got canceled. Uh, so it was supposed to be a surprise. <laughs> it was a pretty clever idea, man. I, I was a little bummed about that. I that I can't go because I was a re- that would have been a really cool thing. You know, my wife bought me tickets to go see Thunder Down Under. Oh, for God's sake! <laughs> <laughs> what is that? Is that right? Were you dropped as a child? <laughs> <laughs> I, I think you guys knew what that was. <laughs> Is that some weird show that they advertise all over Vegas? It's male strippers. Yeah. Thunder down under. Sounds like yeah. it doesn't it sound like a monster truck kind of deal. <sighs> and now thunder down under. Yeah. Eddie's got the better radio voice. <laughs> <laughs> and now let me bro. <laughs> yeah. introduce. The thunder from down under, and then here's yeah, the, that just that sounds wrong in so that many would ways. Be cool. <laughs> I want to see Bigfoot. Y'all ever go to a truck rally? Oh, yeah. oh my god, I, grew I up. worked at one. Did you really? Yeah. Yeah. Back in the eighties, my father used to get it. Was actually my grandfather used to get us uh, box seats at Madison Square Garden to see the truck pulls. And, man, oh yeah, you could smell the diesel up there, man. Oh, yeah. It's cool. <laughs> Plus, it was the and the the cool thing about when you get the boxes, man, he made sure it was all catered. Right. So it was like we all you're doing is eating and drinking the whole day. It was right. great. Hey Josh, I just want to let you know too. Yeah. I actually brought your hat. I was gonna wear it, but Eddie's <laughs> wearing it. So I'll switch the way. I'll switch it. I am not. Oh wearing no, you're not it. wearing it. No, no, I'm not. You can. You can. <laughs> we can. How about how about this? We just rotate hats from patrons throughout the video. There you go. So we'll move to Josh Roy here shortly, and then we'll give you a good time, Charlie's hat. We'll give you a Tom <laughs> Ryan's hat. Maybe one of these days when I get big and famous like Josh Roy, I'll get my own hat. Highway to yeah. the I heard Josh is buying In a my bus. own mind, I guess. Are you buying a bus? Is it the short bus, Josh? <laughs> <laughs> hey, so so sorry, so now late that, on the queue. It was way late. So now that we have you on the air, Josh, when is your your LP or your EP coming out? So we were originally thinking around August, but I think it's going to change because we just made a decision to add um add nine more songs to our album what yeah so we're gonna have a total it's gonna be a cd with 13 songs on it um i just so i just wrote uh, a couple of songs uh, as well as my guitar player but i have a couple of those songs that are i've got like a good six eight tune in there um and then uh, i've got a drinking song that i added as well um don't you but, have one, uh, don't you have one called thunder down under yeah that's the brand new one it's the one that i'm gonna write last yeah. week <laughs> yeah, he's got, he's got yeah. half years. He's trying to figure out which one to push. You know what? Yeah, this exactly. Show, so the camera can't see what I'm doing right now behind the equipment. <laughs> one, Josh. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, so we're, 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 we're probably about another six months. Uh, six months right. out um, before we uh, before we're finalized with the rest of these nine songs, and then after that, we're gonna we're probably gonna do the release party, plan it you know, um, around that, around that same time we're finished. So nice. I heard you needed an opening band. Wink, wink, hint, hint. 
Yeah. Um, yeah. I was. I was. Th- if you know anybody, let me know. Because okay. Wow. You know. <laughs> I heard you need a film crew. Yeah, film crew and opening yeah. band. Speaking of film yeah. crew, I'm gonna tell you guys this. Yeah, when I uh, went to shoot at Matt Saloon, so I had announced that I was going up because I was shooting because it was the top five uh-huh. country bar, you know, of the year type thing. Plus, yeah. I the, the music travel vlog thing, and I get up there, and they're like, "Oh, you're the guy." Well, where's the crew? I'm like, "I'm it, man. This is <laughs> you want a free contest?" That's not true because Carly helps you. Carly didn't come up for that one. Oh, that's the one where yeah. that's the trip where y'all thought I was having a heart attack and I had to come home. Oh, that's right. And then I was like off my keister for a couple of days. Right. Yeah, that was great. <laughs> hey, Josh, who, are, who are some of the musicians that are helping you out on your album? So I've got Donnie Grubb and Kit Holoff and then uh, Brian Cuban. Uh, Brian Cuban's mixing it and Donnie and Kit are, are playing on it. Did you guys see Mogion's uh, performance last night? I didn't get to watch it. What's the what's the plan to show? There? Yeah, I saw Marble Heart played there. It's the EX four or something the like that. The X3, I think it's up in North Phoenix. Dude, that venue is ridiculous. I, yeah. Those I, guys, I want to have pockets like that. Someday. Yeah, I saw uh Clint Williams and Marble Heart played there, and then I saw um Mogion there last night. That that place, I mean those guys killed it. Mogion. Oh yeah. I'm well I mean say, yeah, you gotta expect yeah. that. Right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I'm, yeah. Proud, I'm proud to say I'm from the same area as Mogion. Yeah. You're, and, and I'm going to camp on the Mogion Rim this uh, this weekend. So, hey, dude, guess what? You know, guess what? 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 My dad and I bought a trailer. So, are you coming up camping? Is that what you're telling me? We might come stalk you. Yeah, we were actually just talking about this last night. Yeah, Eddie and I are going to be RV buddies. Yeah. Ah, oh, sweet. I'll probably have the ten person tent that I got. That's about all I got. So I'll be in between both of your guys' RVs in case there's a windy day. There you go. <laughs> so, Josh, what, what's going on in your in your personal life with uh, kids and all that? So we're we're gonna we're expecting a we're expecting a daughter here soon. That's the biggest I news. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Congrats on yep. that. I was Thank actually you. kinda you, you're we're getting to everything I'm supposed to be getting into on Friday. No one's gonna tune in for the oh, show. Shoot. I'll stop that. <laughs> Let me ask one more question. Do you have a name picked out? We're thinking Paisley. Ooh, really? Ooh, that's great. Yeah, oh, you have to go with that. So, well, we have, cause you know, we have Easton and we have Luke, um, and, uh, but Easton wasn't named after Easton Corbin. Um, actually Easton was named after a band, a local band out here, a rock band, uh, it was Easton Ash with Ryan Sims. Oh yeah. And, yeah. Yeah. So I, I always loved that name Easton. I thought that was a really cool name and they were, you know, I really loved watching those guys. So that's how I named Easton, but then Luke, obviously Luke Bryan, and it drives me absolutely that shit crazy when i hear people say oh luke skywalker like oh my god well, no dude, i don't watch skywalker star wars Fox, nerd. Man. Come <laughs> so on. so then we thought well what, what about a girl's name so we were kind of you know you know we were, it was it was kind of a, a, a toss-up between either bertha or paisley so we obviously went with uh went with the the the, the worst of the two you know paisley right no paisley so, i like that name thanks yeah it, it, I'm I'm kind of I'm kind of excited, you know. I don't know what to expect. Uh, I know that I hear a lot of people that have had daughters that kind of tell me what, you know, that my whole world's going to change and all that. And I, you know, I don't know what to expect, but I'm not going to take that lightly. <laughs> well, I can I can tell you this, Josh. Knowing you as a on, on a personal level, you are a great dad, and uh, you're going to be a great, going to be a great father to that little Thanks. girl. Um, you know, I, I take good. take fathering tips from Josh all the time. It's Josh Roy fathering 101. So. <laughs> Because uh, you know I'm a, I'm a brand new dad at 47, and everyone, everyone he's like, why does he call you grandpa? I'm like, because I'm old enough to be his grandpa, but I'm his dad. I'm <laughs> yeah. But uh, I tell you, and, and I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you this sincerely. I am glad I don't have a daughter. Because <laughs> I would be well, that dad. I would be that dad that would take the boyfriend out camping and never bring him back. Well, and, I'm probably you, already you know, going to be that dad. So you know, I mean, uh, have you, have you kinda, seen like how much? My daughter stresses me out. Oh yeah, being fifteen. Yeah, home warming. Oh my gosh, dude, I didn't want to leave her. And she gets all dressed up, and her friend's dad was going to take her and everything. And my wife and I were like, we didn't want to let her out the door. I wouldn't. We were freaking out. <laughs> Plus, it was the same as our house warming party. We're like, oh god. <laughs> I'm like, hey, I'm going to go and I'm going to be a chaperone. And she was not having that at all. That's awesome. Yeah. That's oh awesome. man, what you guys are doing. What do you guys do? I, I read August twenty seventh. August, okay. 
Yeah. Well, that's probably why you moved your, your, uh, your, your, I'm well, gonna, no. Right. So we were still going to have it. Um, we were still going to have it cause I was, you know, kind of planning on out, you know, good. We were going to begin planning it and you got to kind of give yourself between three and, and six months to really plan something out like that. So right. that's why I kind of shot for that, you know, around after our baby was born in the first place. But, but then, um, you know, all this stuff kind of hit. So we're, we're just kind of put on hold, but, um, I will announce a date here, um, after, after all this crap clears and, and, uh, and start planning that out. Um, venue is definitely one of those things that we have to, we have to lock in. So I want to figure out the, the best, not just the best place, but the best location, you know, you know I, I've got, you know, and, and, being where I live out in Peoria right. and I play some gigs out here, but I have a lot more friends out here that I've met from living out here. Plus I got all my fans and everybody all the way out to Santan flat and Gilbert and, right. and Mason and all that stuff. So, you know, I don't want to book something way up here and then go, okay, all of you guys that are at Santan flat crowd, come on out here to Lake Pleasant and let's do a little release party. You know, what if you did something centralized, I know, uh, what's the rhythm room. They do a lot of, of, uh, yeah, so you can do a show there. Um, the the thing is, it's self promoting, right? Self promoting. Yeah, yeah, so you do that, and um, I mean, we could help you know sell tickets and everything like that. But yeah, but that would be a cool that would be a cool spot room. to do it. Yeah. And that, it's a how great, many how many uh, people can that place fit? Uh, I think the capacity. I want because I've been there a few times. I want to say it's like three or four hundred. Is it three or four hundred? Yeah, so oh, I, be, it, at least two two fifty. I think you'd be okay, Josh, because I I think you only have what five or six fans now. Well, yeah, but I mean, if you count their kids and their pets, um, there's a little I'm bit more. So. Your number one fan, right? Yeah, exactly. So you know, you know how many seats you're gonna need. Right, right. Yeah, I'm gonna need negative thirty for the opening band. <laughs> hey, so I, I wanted to ask you guys this when you were playing with Rob West, but have you played golf with Rob? Because you and I have played golf, and we're I have not played with Rob West. I heard he's I probably. Will. I don't know if I'd I want would. to play golf with Rob. I wouldn't. Yeah, I would. I mean, I would be embarrassed. I would. It would almost be to the point where I would want to punch myself for my golfing. Right. Well, that's why Josh and I are such great friends because our golf game is like we are. We might as well be playing from the same side of the. Because I play left handed, he plays right handed. But uh, we had fun yeah. when we golf because we. I don't think we kept score. No, no, because we'll just from now on. Let's just put the golf tee inside of the in, in the actual in the hole. Right uh, at, at the pin, and then we'll just hit the golf ball to any random spot and say, "Hey, that was a good shot." Or maybe we should take Rob West with us, and we'll just play it. We can play like a scramble where we just use his ball every time. He every hit. time, yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh! I think he I mean, has a one in three chance to. I've been wanting to give him a call. I want to get him on the air one of these days, and I'm going to propose that. Right. We're going to call it the the Rob West scramble. That would be fun. Yeah, get all the musicians be, out there. Oh my god! And actually, do something for charity. Right. Who's a really good golfer is Donnie Grubb. Is he really? Oh, wow. So, well, you guys know I used to play amateur where we're talking like, um, I stopped. Play, well, I mean, it's been 12 years since I stopped playing. Right. Well, no, I stopped playing after that, but, um, all the way through my twenties, huh. I played tournaments and everything like that. We're, we're talking, we're not talking putt putt golf. We're talking actual real golf. Yeah. Sure. Come on, let's I done a night home country club for <laughs> eight years. <laughs> I stayed what? in trouble all the time. My, my ex-wife would be like, where the hell is that useless husband of mine? And then, she, you know, yeah. and all of a sudden I'd hear her yelling over the fence. I'm like, Hey babe. Yeah, you know, I'm in hey, trouble again. Josh, you know what? Do you know what Eddie was yelling back? What's that? Oh! Uh, <laughs> good time. She called me at work. Uh, so, so, hey guys, guys, oh. I gotta, I gotta get going. I gotta drop the boy off. We gotta head out, going camping now. But I, I, I man, be, uh, be safe. And, uh, I look forward to seeing you all again soon. You got well, it, and we'll see you next Friday. Be safe. All right, all right. later. All right. Bye, Bye, guys. Hashtag bromance. Yeah, dude. But you see the bromance, the thing, the bromance thing going on is like between a few of us now, and it's kind of, right. it's looking pretty bad. Well, it's it's <laughs> it's you, yeah. me, Josh Russell, yeah, Larry Brosson, yeah, the guitar player for sure. Uh, I've always had a bromance on Donnie Grubb. Like he's a hero of mine. You know, I have to say, I feel the same way. Whenever I get to talk to Donnie, I'm like, I'm talking to Donnie. Like he's just so cool. Dude, you he know. Is super cool and i and i you know and i got to uh last week we had them on him and kid on the air right. and they had me on the air a few months ago on their um uh show and it, it's just so much fun and you don't even care if anyone's listening no. or watching it's no. just it's just pure fun and you know 
I mean, fortunately, this time I didn't really have to censor that much. But right. Well, I was afraid do, I would. They do it at 1130 at night. I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's um, because you get slap happy. You know, did you hear Donnie Grubb's song that he wrote like at breakfast about about his grandfather? I think so. Dude, it is yeah. like he's just such an amazing musician. Like he goes, oh, yeah, I, I sat down. I wrote this one at, at you know breakfast this morning. And <laughs> and it's it's amazing. Like it's he's just a, he's just a. Donnie Grubb is a good dude. Yeah, he is. A real good dude. Super good dude. Um, yeah, I, I really uh, enjoy And I live close to the Hitchin Post, so I get to go up there quite a bit and, you know, hang out. So, you know, big shout out to Mo. You know, they're doing takeout and I think yeah. delivery. Have you ever had the Mo wings? You know, I don't think I've had the Mo wings. I was reading about them. He throws some curry on there and, dude, they are fantastic. What? Yeah. Yeah, I got it. Well, I was just talking to her about it last night that if they were just a little closer, oh crap, I could have told you to pick up wings or bring them. Oh, there you go. Well, it's like it's almost 30 minutes, I think, from here to the post. I got to tell you, I used to ride my horses to the post. Yeah. I'm jealous. <laughs> um, yeah, but I, you know, Mo and Tina are doing well. They're hanging in there. I know a uh, good time Charlie's, you know, I mean, um, they're doing curbside. You know, it's, uh, it's a really cool community. It's, yeah it really is i mean for I, sure i'm just i'm i'm blessed to be in the family i'm, I'm really excited too like i said next, next a little history about our, our band is uh so like i said i started in the garage and within a month we had 15 songs learned and then two weeks later we had our first gig which was thank god only an hour and a half long because we only knew an hour and a half more of the songs and then we did our, our kind of first thing was we did the roosters uh open mic we did it a couple times and then uh kind of got noticed and we started doing shows and uh, we did a bourbon jacks open mic a couple times and uh then i met eddie smith and it's just been uh yeah. you know i just want to tell you i oh. am so thankful for you and, and carly i mean you guys have really taken this project on and and kept us you know on the on the on the on the fast track going forward i mean we had before the pandemic, I think we had what eighty six gigs booked, um, mm -hmm. you know, and it's been at least yeah, it's it's been good. You know, I, I'm excited because I get to go back home in in June, and uh, I'm from Pine Top Lakeside, and I'm hoping that we get through this so we can play. We're at the Lions Den up in Pine Top, and you got to go up there with us last year. Oh, that was a great, yeah. great trip Even, and a great video too. That's one of our more popular right. um, travel music vlogs with the band. Yeah. People like the, the demographics or the demographics. Yeah, the demographics, the analytics basically show that um, it, it, the whole country was watching that video. It was crazy. Wow. Well, yeah. you know, the Lions Den is known. I mean, the, the owner Jay, he's a huge Roger Klein fan. Roger Klein plays up there. Just a little bit. Just a little. Yeah, he bought his tour. Bought bus, his right? tour bus. Yeah. But, um, you know, it's really cool to see that place completely turned around. Like, the back venue is amazing. Drew Cooper plays up there. I know uh, Arizona Blacktop plays up there. I think yeah. uh, I think Justin Hits and Southbound, they've played up there. Um, I think they did a duo, or maybe they played. I know that he got up there and, and played with, with Roger Klein a few times. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, we're up there June 20th and 21st, and then the 27th, um, we're doing the uh, Pine Top Lakes Out Hot, Hot Air Balloon Festival, and we should know by May 15th that that's a go still. I'm, I'm hoping it is. That's a big, like, it's when I go back home, man, it's so much fun to play. In no, I'm not looking forward to Monday because I have to start going through what we have in May and see what's happening. And, and I, from what I'm hearing, so, you know, I've had one, one band tell me they have confirmed gigs in May, and I just, sorry, guys, I don't believe it. <laughs> not right, yet. Right. No. You know, and the, anybody I talk to regarding, you, you know your your bookings um it was kind of like uh, come on really like you don't even have to confirm it's not happening right and, and so and and basically i think everyone's just taking it one month at a time is right what it is right. it really is right um yeah so after after july after june 27 the bloom festival the next weekend july 4th we were up in alpine arizona doing the july 4th show up there at uh at the uh the place up there and uh we're excited about that too so um yeah hopefully things take off and we get back to wouldn't that be nice music. just it get would. back to work yeah exactly i want to get back to shooting demos and for for those of you watching you know country road does do photography and demos big shout out to us we do want you, to get back to work <laughs> if you see all of our pictures on our on our website uh highway260.com eddie does 95 percent of the of the uh, video or the 
video and photos there. Um, you know, we've been ha- <laughs> we do everything in house. Yeah, we get we we've done your website. We actually host yep. your website. We've done all their um, still photo work. We've done their post prod on that post prod on video. We featured them a few times and uh, get our our uh, marketing gifts like our our koozies. Yeah, yeah, we got to get more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I'll do another song. Yeah, let's go for it. Do a little whiskey Myers, and then right. I'm gonna do. Uh, I want to I want to do a song for a friend of mine. Uh, and I'll do it again on, on Facebook, but, uh, uh, Sheree Hall is a gal I grew up with in Shello and her son is in, in the armed forces. I believe he's in the army mm-hmm. and, uh, she wanted me to do a little pink Floyd out. So I'm going to do that, uh, after nice. this, uh, after this whiskey Meyer song. And, so. and for those that are watching, we are taking requests and oh, we uh, are, yeah, we are taking requests. Why not? So I love putting him on the spot and the virtual tip jar is open at uh donate dot country road entertainment.net just so you know too guys and gals uh thank you so much for being good patrons of the music in 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 you know helping support the the, the local musicians and local bars and restaurants and uh i would ask that you that you donate to eddie smith too because he does this full time and um our band's not going to take any of the any of the donation money it's all going to go straight to eddie um and carly but uh and he is what he's done for arizona and the local local scenes um you know norton's and and tom ryan's and bourbon jacks and the hitchin post and matt saloon and lion's den i mean uh gallop and goose and coolidge i mean i'm trying to think of all the places you've gone to watch us play um We've, tom I, ryan's in the last three and a half years um i've i've lost count i've probably been to um close with it helpful probably close to 1500 shows now i'd say maybe wow. 800 shows there's been times when we'll hit three or four tonight just right. to catch up with everyone right and we're, and we're like literally we i mean we're um oh my gosh we're, we, the whole state we're now working with colorado now and i mean we just had county line band on from tucson the other day man their new ap it's good yeah. you should check it out you also do stuff up in uh and, or down in Vegas too, right? We've done a lot of shooting in Vegas, yeah. um, Gillies, and and um, we've I think we've done two, two or three of them were bands from here, and then we um, shot a band that was out of um, Burbank, California, that was pretty talented as well. So, you know, and we we were I, if this hadn't happened, I'd be in I would have been in Nashville for two weeks. Oh, look at you! Oh, we got to expand. <laughs> You know, but I mean, we want to, you know, my dream is to get, you know, get everywhere. I mean, when right. I started this, this was just, you know, some sort of, sort of a side hustle and everything. And then it grew and grew and grew and it just kind of became a job. And, you know, the, this awesome woman I married was like, yeah, you really do need to do this full time. There's so much potential. And then of course COVID hit. I'm like, sorry, babe, we, we were doing, how long was I full time when that happened? Not just a few weeks, uh, probably, it, probably a month. Well, that first month was going really well. I was right. like, I am set. I can do this. Everything's be fine. Right, right. And then all of a sudden, that I woke up one morning and it was, uh, that's pretty much how I felt. <laughs> so we're going to take the buttons away from me. Yeah. Hey, right. I'm going to send this, this Whiskey Meyer song out to another buddy of mine, Josh Strickland of the Bayou Bandits. He's a big Whiskey Myers fan. Oh, yeah. And, uh, you know, if you haven't followed uh, Josh Strickland, the Bayou Bandits, those guys, they, they you know, he moved to Arizona and kind of started a, a you know, country theme, but he went back to his roots and is doing the Southern Rock. And uh, so I'm going to do a little Southern Rock for you, Josh. And uh, by the way, too, uh, Josh Strickland is a, is a former armed service guy. He's a former Army guy. And uh, thank you for my freedom. He's also an RN, a nurse, and he's out there. I think he's traveling right now where the COVID-19 uh, pandemic is the worst. And so, uh, Josh, you know, thank you for all you've done, not only as a nurse, but as a music industry and and a good friend of mine. You've thrown me gigs and helped me out. So uh, I'm going to send this out to my buddy, Josh Strickland. Isn't that weird? I have a good friend, Josh Roy and Josh Strickland. All right, little Whiskey Myers. All right, goes out to Josh Strickland. What do you think? Oh, you got to have, have the mic. You got to have the mouth. mic in front of your face. What do I think? I try not to. <laughs> <laughs> that gets me in trouble too. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know, 
I want to. I know, try not to take sides. Uh, you can't. <laughs> yeah. You can't. Um, you know, so we probably won't be on air here much longer, but I wanted to kind of end this segment with talking about my, my family. So I got married almost three years ago to my soulmate, my wife, Kristen. And, uh, you know, we were a little bit older and, uh, we really wanted to start a family and I've waited a long time and she had to, and, you know, we, we were blessed with this, this wonderful miracle, our son Sawyer. And, uh, it, it was funny cause we, you know, we found out we were pregnant and, and we had some complications, but we got through it. I know I was there when you delivered the baby. I know it was really weird seeing a guy do it, but Hey, <laughs> but, um, I've seen worse. Yeah. But, um, you know, and it really, it's really, I understand when people say, you know, kids are the most amazing thing that you could ever imagine. But on the other side too, I never realized how a 10 month, 10 month old could completely overtake your house like i don't we don't even have a room now there's toys in every room i mean it's you it's think, something else but dude but uh wait yeah. until wait until he gets older oh, i can't wait oh it's gonna be my fishing and hunting buddy but um it was funny you know we were sitting around like i said we found out we were pregnant and we went to breakfast and uh we went to uh first watch and i'll never forget this it was on val vista and we're sitting there and we we pulled out our phones, which we never do during during when we eat, but we did because we were gonna look at names, and we came up with Sawyer, and it was really it was really personal to me because like my dad was a union welder, and when he would get well when he would get laid off, we would go and we would cut wood for money. You know, we would cut wood and sell it, and so basically we were Sawyers, and and that you know when and we both just looked at each other and said Sawyer, that's it, that's the name. And then uh, it was really cool because I wanted to name because, you know, her father is such a great man and, and he's been, you know, very influential into my life and, and same with her mother and her whole family. Um, we, we named Sawyer's middle name after her, her father, Robert. And of course he keeps my last name Howell. So, so my dad's name will live on and uh, it's just been a really cool ride. And, you know, my dad's waited a long time. My mom passed away, unfortunately, almost eight years ago. So she won't ever get to, you know, physically see her grandson. But, um, I know she looks down on him every day and I feel her presence, but you know, it's really cool to watch my dad and this, his grandson, you know, he, he lives up in Heber at a ranch up there, but he comes down and, uh, you know, he gets spoiled from all the grandparents and, uh, you know, Sawyer's got some amazing cousins on Kristen's side. Um, you know, Jameson and Carter and Carter's the, the almost 11 year old stud baseball player who, you know, it'll be cool when Sawyer gets a little bit older and he can look up to his big cousin, Carter. And, you know, I know Carter's going to probably go pretty far in the baseball world. And, uh, you know, and there's his younger cousin, Jameson, who's three, is going to be something special. This kid, he, he's three years old and he speaks Spanish. He's, wow. Yeah. Three years old, he speaks Spanish. Yeah, yeah. And, Already. And he speaks English. <laughs> but <laughs> I think French is going to be the next language. But he's... Uh, you know, English is my second language, right? Is it really? Yeah, my first language was Jersey. Jersey. Hold on. <laughs> You're welcome. All kind of zingers today, huh? You know, you know, um, <clears throat> I've been getting a lot of advice from Clint, and it made me reflect on my number one video of all time was with him. Which and, one? Um, I have to go and look it up. It's on YouTube. But basically, you would have thought that Clint and I, I mean, you can tell he's a musician in it, but you would have thought we were a couple of you know, uh, TV game show hosts. Oh yeah. It was, it's a, it was a riot. And, um, I was going through it every morning when I'm having my coffee, I go through every, everything for two, three hours, my SEO, my analytics. And I was looking at that the other day and I'm like, my God, we were completely out of control. And that video killed. And every day he's like, Eddie, you gotta, you, he says, naturally you have the game show host personality. Oh yeah. Do that on camera and you'll kill the internet. You'll break the internet. I'm telling so. you, you've got that radio voice too. Well, see, and that's the whole thing there. Apparently there's a mus uh, a talk show host out there that I sound just like. So for the past 12, at least 12 years, people have told me that I need to be on the radio. So when I started filming and, you know, and my audio improved over time, people were, you know, started saying it even more. So that's why, you know, four weeks ago, we finally said, okay, here we go. Right. You know, so I don't even care if I'm on the camera anymore. I'm always on the camera. It's like, you know. Yeah. 
but but um but i i, I think this is I, I think this is just just another avid do you realize how many platforms we are on as of now i don't so you know that we were on facebook right and then we have uh you know instagram um, you know instagram twitter youtube right okay and then we have the two groups on facebook and then you have patreon or patreon. patreon and we do a lot of cool like behind the scenes stuff on that but now we're on spotify and like Oh gosh, seven other podcast um, um, places. Really? Yeah. Um, I'll tell you real quick before you go on uh, to, to the next song. And uh, by the way, you need to do like maybe four, and then just run through them. Oh that's what gosh. everyone's here for. You'll be fine. Okay. But um, we are currently on Spotify, Podchaser, Deezer, Stitcher, Podcast Addict, Listen Notes, Generic RS feed, RSS feeds, and we will be on um, iTunes. By uh, midweek, we are going to be on Amazon and Alexa by midweek. Wow! And 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 it just goes on and on. So we're pretty much Country Road Entertainment went from this nervous guy taking photos of bands in January of 2017 to we're pretty much going to be on every platform. I mean, we're technically on Reddit, but I don't do much on it. Right. That's you know? pretty amazing. It's aren't just, you on? Aren't you on LinkedIn too? <laughs> I'm on LinkedIn. I don't really do anything with it because I just I just don't understand. It. I get I get requests. So and so wants you to share your profile on LinkedIn. I'm like I don't even know what that is. Some of that stuff freaks me out, man. Yeah, right. Completely freaks me yeah. out. Yeah, but um, so I just you know I really want to give my wife a big shout out because you know we've had issues just like any married couple. Um, you know, brand new parents, older brand new parents. Um, you know, we've had some ailments. You know, she had serious uh labor issues when when our son was 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 born and uh and then you know we survived through that she survived and uh then three months later i had a massive heart attack and uh it's just it seems like it's always one thing after another but that you saved my you and my wife saved my life if you hadn't come here that yeah. day and, and the only reason why i'm still alive is within 24 hours she got the supplements i needed because i could not go back to the doctors because of covid right so I don't know if you noticed, I'm not out of breath. Right. So, you know, it's a, not a permanent fix, but yeah, I, I probably, I, I don't know. I don't think I would have made it. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's, that's what, I mean, that's what the community is all about. You know, we, I think we get so involved with, with our own lives and, and worrying about ourselves, we forget to give back. And uh, that's one thing I've noticed with the community, with the COVID, you know, people, it's funny because you can see everyone's business on social media, but they're really giving back. Um, and I, and I personally appreciate that. And, uh, you know, if there's anyone out there that needs anything that I can give back, please, you know, don't hesitate, you know, PM me or text me or smoke signal me or fax me. I don't care, but you know, we, we are not hurting. And, uh, you know, if anyone needs anything, we would love to be able to help you out. You know, and I, here in Mesa, we have plenty of pigeons, so we can send, you know, a pigeon messenger over. Pigeon messenger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd love to get them off my roof. They're destroying it. <laughs> they have this thing called a BB gun. <laughs> BB, dude, you can't do that on the air, man. Some some hater's going to come on, you know. <laughs> They're going to be like, oh, you shoot animals just when we're hungry. I didn't say anything about shooting. I just said buy a BB gun. Buy a BB gun. <laughs> So what are you going to play for us next, Dustin? Uh, so I think I'm going to do a little Pink Floyd. It's uh, All I've, never, right. I've never really played this song, but uh, like I said, my friend Cherie Hall, uh, she requested this, and I haven't played it for her yet, and I'm, I apologize. I've got another request for another Joe Diffie tune for my buddy uh, Cliff Butler who I, that I haven't done, but I will do that in the next couple days. And I know that Carly's father was a big Pink Floyd fan, so we'll send this out my, to... My, my dad, too. Really? Oh, my dad's huge pink floyd so now you really put even more pressure on oh me. my gosh you know for those of you just joining uh, my name is eddie smith and i am with country road entertainment and guest here dustin lee howell from the highway 260 ben is talking with us today about um his life so we can get to know him personally and uh, about country music and he's playing us some songs to keep us entertained during this quarantine time period. And so we're playing, since we're talking about country music, we're going to play some Pink Floyd. Yeah. Speaking of which, we're going to switch it up to some classic rock. Sweet. <laughs> All right, Sheree, this goes out to you and your son who's fighting for our, our freedom in the Army. And uh, God bless him. And uh, Carly, this goes out to your dad. We miss him. I'm sure you do. I know he's here with us right now because I see this ghost ship moving around. Stuff's going around. Hey, ever since it, we got that guitar hung on the wall, it's been uh, a little active here. 
That's awesome. Take it away. There's my guitar. Which one are you going to play for us? Uh, we're going to do Wish You Were Here. Uh, I guess good. I probably should have said what's, what Pink Floyd song. So we're going to do uh, Wish You Were Here, and this goes out to Sheree and all you other Pink Floyd uh, lovers. And uh, Cody Jinx has a cool version of this, but... Actually, it is pretty cool. I heard it. I like it. Yeah, it's really cool. I know. All right, here we go. All right. It goes out to our Pink Floyd fans and Shree and Carly's father and Eddie's dad. And Hey, uh, speaking of dad, Pops just popped in. Oh, hey, dad. Yeah. Hey, Daryl, how are you, Bubba? What song does my dad want to hear? Yeah, well, well... Hey, Pops, what song would you like to hear? Go ahead and type it below your, your wave right there. Love your dad, man. He's a great guy. My dad is a great He's guy. He's awesome. And uh, You got to meet my dad, too. He's pretty cool. I met your dad at your reception. Well, that's right. At. He's a big guy. Big guy. Tall. Truck driver. We have that's a lot right. in common. Um, oh, he loves to talk to other truck drivers, too. Oh, yeah. It's good because after a while, I'm just like, bro. Right. You know, I, I had another request that I can do, too. And this is, goes out to my, my buddy, Shannon. Um, we grew up together too, and uh, she requested some Waylon. Oh, there you go. Can't go wrong with Waylon. No. So Shannon Mills' father—that's her maiden name. We grew up in the same neighborhood together, actually. And uh, we, uh, gosh, man, as kids, we had so much fun in that neighborhood. We we didn't have a curfew, and you know, growing up in Pine Top, we. There wasn't anything we didn't do. It's funny because people are like, oh, what did you do up there? It's so boring. I'm like, what didn't we do? We were, we were always outside. That's how it was where we grew up. You yeah. know, if you didn't come home with mud on you, what were you doing? So how was it like growing up in the South Bronx? You you know I did not grow up in the a, city. I didn't get a drum roll for that? No. That's what you get for that. Nice. Now, now so there are no rumors start. I was raised... I was raised all over Jersey, but I was raised out in the country. Right. You know, people and, don't realize there's you know, country in New Jersey. Oh man. I mean, there's just farms everywhere where I was, right. you know, with my, when I was born, my dad, so my dad was born in Edison, New Jersey, which is not far from the industrial areas and everything. Right. And when we, you know, and he had already been a Wrangler, he'd been already been to Vietnam and driving truck and, you know, um, he hated the suburbs and he moved us out to, uh, Hunterdon County. And I grew up walking distance from, the Delaware River and the Musconetcont River. I can still remember the very last time my dad took me fishing because he lost his big old brookie. Oh no! So the river was was high, so um, you had to wade through water about twenty feet to get to the shoreline, the original shoreline. And we're fishing, and this, oh my gosh, this 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 thing was massive. I I would say it was a good four or five pounder. It was huge. Wow! And um. Uh, he gets it onto the shore and he goes to reach down and I'm coming up with a net and I'm probably, it's probably 86 and I didn't get there in time. That sucker bounced right off that hook and went psh, 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 skipping through the water, right back into the river. And then he packed up and that was the last time I ever seen him fish. <laughs> Four pops. Oh man. And it like, and I've tried it. Like I want to take it. I don't want to go fishing. You sure don't want to go fishing, Bubba? I don't want to go fishing. I got it. I got to share a, a fishing story with, with you about my dad. Oh, all right. So, a lot of a lot of people don't know this, but I used to actually fish professionally. So, I fished right. on the FLW circuit. Uh, Subway sponsored me. We, I fished professionally for like seven years. Uh, those that you watch, Johnny Johnson from Pine Top. You know, I fished against Johnny, Matt, Matt, uh, Matt Shura. I mean, all these big names, mm -hmm. um, uh, local names, and it, I mean, it was a blast. But it became a job. But I'm gonna tell you the story. So <laughs> should I be nervous? Oh yeah. Oh it's, boy, it's great. So okay. I, I, not I've got a ton of stories, fishing stories with my dad. But, uh -huh. But there's one particular, we used to fish a tournament, picture 15 bass boats on Willow Springs up, okay. in, up on the rim, right? Tiny little trout lake, but there's bass in there, small mouth and large mouth. Okay. And it's trolling motor, motor only. So you got all these big bass boats on this tiny lake. And like I would run a generator on my boat to keep my batteries charged so I could win, right? So I could get to the spots first. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So with the weekend before we're up there pre-fishing practicing. And so I take the boat into the dock and, and I was going to, uh, bring the trailer down. Right. Okay. So I could load the boat and I asked my dad, I'm like, do you want to stay on or do you want to get off on the dock? And I swear to God, he said, stay on. Right. So I pulled up the dock and then I moved the boat Well, he was getting off and he had one leg on the dock and one leg on the boat. And as I'm pulling away, like he's doing the splits, 
<laughs> and it's going to be one of those it's going to be one of those those tasks of it's like okay which way do i go do i jump on the boat or jump on the dock oh no yeah he oh. didn't he didn't jump on either he went right in the water oh no now this is like i want to say this is like may so the water's still probably 50 degrees uh-huh. and i watched him go under and he comes up goes <gasps> and then he like he's trying to <laughs> he's just trying to tread water at that oh point oh my god oh, it felt Lord. so bad you know my dad was probably this is probably 10 years ago so he was you know 60 five sixty six so uh yeah but he made it um made it back made it on the dock and we fished forever, and, and we fished after. yeah, <laughs> yeah my like how you, we made it to the dock and we fished <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and we heard he got past the punchline there right right <laughs> i right, do a little whaling this goes out to my, my good friend shannon she requested this and uh do a little whaling here for you a little side note, my mom grew up with Waylon's wife, Jesse Coulter. Yeah, that's right. You've told me that. Yeah, they were actually next door neighbors in in uh, in Mesa, uh, just right on the north side of the freeway and uh, went to Mesa High together. And Now, you know, uh, you know, his greatness is actually buried in Mesa. Yeah. Yeah, he's right over, actually, like literally straight down the road from us. Yep, back, yeah. right on Main Street. It's on uh, uh, Main and um, Country Club. Yep. Yeah. That is correct. All right, this goes out to you Whalen fans, too. Yeah. All right, a little Whalen. Yeah, I like it. Man, I'm kind of tempted to pull out an original. You know what? It'd be a good time for it. Let's make this the last song. All right. So this is a song that I wrote for my wife. I didn't write it the night that we got engaged. I worked on it for about three months. But, uh. But this is a song that I sang her uh, to ask her to marry me. I did it in front of her family up in Greer. Oh. And uh, we'd known each other for about seven months. And uh, probably the most nervous performance I've ever done. <laughs> Everyone knew. Oh, come on. You, you say this stuff all the time. I'm telling you, it was, it was pretty oh. nerve-wracking. It was pretty nerve wracking. How'd you do? Did you screw it up? No, actually, I think I nailed it. Oh, <laughs> she said yes. <laughs> okay, I don't know what to say. <laughs> <laughs> she said yes. That's all that matters. Yeah. So I'm gonna send this out to my my lovely wife, Kristen, and uh, you know, without her and her support, I mean, I I wouldn't even be here doing this, and uh, and I just appreciate her and love her so much, and uh, and uh, love my son Sawyer, my dad, and love you guys, Eddie, and you and Carly, and. Uh, I love the country music scene here in Arizona and all the venues. And uh, I'm just telling you, thank you so much for accepting us, you know, in our band Highway 260. And uh, we're just we're just blessed to have you all in our lives. So uh, don't cry. Oh, we love you too. And actually, you can play this, but then I have a re- one a request for you today. Oh, great. Okay. Yeah. Hopefully, I know it. No, I think you know it because it's actually in the same key. Oh, okay. Good lord. Justin Lee Howell, the Highway 260 band, everybody. Yee, yee. Now, you wrote that for your wife? I did. She stayed with you. No, Can you believe it? That was pretty good, actually. Is that going to be on your new album that you're working on? Yeah, I think so. Yeah? yeah we've got, uh, we got, I think we got four originals done right now. We're going to break them out here probably pretty soon. Um, I'm going to beat Josh Roy to the punch. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> you better get to work then. <laughs> yeah, he's yeah, way, he's way out of you know. now. Oh, I, I've heard, I've heard some of his songs, like uh-huh. like the final cuts. And yeah. I'm telling you, dude, if you don't know Josh Roll, you need to know him because this kid. I'm telling you, I'm a huge fan. Kid, he's trying to tell us he's old. He's 32. Lord, he's got his whole life ahead of him. <clears throat> oh, by Brad Paisley. Yeah, I'm kind of in the mood for some Paisley. I don't know if I can sing it. Let me look at it real quick. All right. I haven't. Gonna, I've you, never heard you do it, so I figured that would be a good one to put you on the spot with. Are you going to do the? Uh, are you going to do the? Uh, uh, what's her name? Don't uh, even Allison ask. Krauss. No part of it. No. If I was feeling brave, we could always do some JC, but I don't want to jump in today. Come on! <laughs> I don't know how Donny Grove got me to do that. I could not believe when I realized. I'm like, holy crap! I'm back on stage. Oh, you're not feeling it? I hear the train coming. It's r- now I'm going to sound like Elvis right there. <laughs> now, how about you? Come on, Eddie. This is the first version. 
I hear the train of coming. It's rolling. Nah, dude, I'm losing. Look, the audience just went away. I'm like, you can't put me on the spot like that. Hey, at least Plus, I'm, least I'm, I'm not really. Like, I'd have to put it in like a lot of low. Oh, actually, that was you. Yeehaw. <laughs> I've never like. played that before. Oh, it's not too bad, man. I thought you, I did pretty good on the Alice. That was pretty part. good. Yeah. You sound kind of like a chick. Kind of. You look like one with a beard. You know what? <laughs> yes, sir. I'm a big Brad Paisley fan. Are you feeling like one more? I am. Oh, there you go. I think. I haven't played this in a long time. No, nah, let's not do it. What should we end with? What request do we have out there? Anything? Yeah, no requests. You know, it's funny, too, because, like, you know, when you see these live concerts, like, some of them get tons of requests and some of them get no requests. Right, right. It's hit or miss. Hit or miss. Um, I don't know. I'd say keep it the 90s, 2000s. Keep it real. Let's, Keeping it real. Or or we could you could do something by, I'm trying to think of who would be a good one to do by. I wonder if I should do something. Man, I'm on the spot. So on the spot. You, you did it to yourself. I did. Yeah, you did. I want to end on something that I know. <laughs> Let's see. What do I know? What do I know? That's the question. What do you know, sir? <laughs> I know that I've had a blast today. Thank yeah. you so much for uh, having me out, Eddie. Yeah, it was great and having you on the show. Carly, thanks for your hospitality and the coffee and the Yeti cup. What kind of coffee is that? That coffee is actually out of Tucson. It's the best. Really? It's called Tucson the best? No. I bet Drew Cooper best. knows what it is. I don't, what's the name of that coffee car? Uh, Delo, De, 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 uh, no. Dolce something or other. Dolce, Deluce, Delicious. Deluce. It's, it's, a, it's a small. There's two, there's two coffee shops um, owned by the same company down there. It's privately owned. And let's put it this way. They sell out of their coffee. Like in the, like in the bags like that, like the one pounders right. by like, you know, mid morning. Normally you actually have to get there early if you want to buy some and you'll see, like I went in the very first time after I'd already had the coffee, I was there with my in-laws and I saw it. I said, to the guy, I said, I see that you got coffee back there. So why don't you want to sell it? And he says, because then we won't have any coffee to serve the rest of the day of the uh, year. I'm like, uh, it's that popular. Wow, so it's yeah. really good. It's amazing. Oh, oh yeah. There's yeah. no bitter taste to it. That's really good. No, it's smooth. It's my great. dad's a big coffee drinker. Dad, we'll help you get some of this coffee for you. Now we can try to persuade my in-laws to send them money and they can ship us up some. All right. That's so, how I get it. They periodically send some. Oh, nice. Yeah. So I've been a big Roger Klein fan since they were the refreshments, right? Well, who isn't? Right. So this was always when I'd go down to Rocky Point. This was always my music. I was blasting. And, and uh, one of my all-time favorite songs is... Uh, uh, green and dumb and it's one of our like I, I don't know it's one of those songs that you really feel when you play it and uh um i'm gonna end with a local band a little rcpm yep you got I it. love it here we go we'll end it with that i like it one of my favorite songs to do so eddie country road entertainment carly thank you so much for having me thank you for all the things you do for highway 260 and not only for just my band, but me personally and my family, my dad, my wife, Kristen, and uh, our son, Sawyer. So we really appreciate you. I hope you know that. And oh, well, biggest, we appreciate you, too. You know, just, just one other thing, too. So uh, my dad's having some medical issues right now. And, uh, you know, we, don't, we have a small house. We're right out there in Gold Canyon or West Apache Jun East Apache Junction, whatever you want to call it. And uh, he's got to have some procedures done. And we haven't – we didn't have a – really a place for him to stay and eddie loaned us his uh, rv uh for a couple weekends and i just want to thank you for that so my dad had a nice you know plush place to stay at the at the ranch and uh you know that's that's what kind of person eddie smith and his wife carly are and we just i appreciate that but oh, don't sweat it man so don't sweat it your family let's plug your website www.highway260band.com 
And he's on Facebook as Highway 260 Band and on Instagram as I think just Highway 260, right? Yeah, which I never post. I never, I need to start posting Instagram. <laughs> you need to give me a race so I can go run that. There you go. <laughs> and, right. and of course, folks, uh, you can always find us at www.countryroadentertainment.net. And it's the home for local live country music in Arizona. When this quarantine is over and all of us are back to work, you will find all the local live music for the entire state of Arizona and Rocky Point, Puerto Penasco, Mexico. And uh, be sure to check us out on YouTube. Uh, we have lots of great videos. And actually, we feature Dustin and Highway 260 in those uh, shows quite a few times, actually, uh, as well as uh, Mr. Bill Bogan from yes. Nathan D. the Damn Man. So some great entertainment over there. So uh, head over to YouTube, go to Venture Road Entertainment, and uh, hit that subscribe button. Next to that, on the right, you'll see a little notification bell. If you hit that, hit all notifications. Every time we uh, upload a video, then you will get a, an alert that says, Venture Road's back on the air. I don't know how you got all that in. Uh, I've been doing this a long time. <laughs> Not today. <laughs> Thank you all for watching. Thank you guys. Hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you soon.